It's another year of uh, profitable growth. Despite a challenging market environment, we continue to see the uh, demand for the commodities that we trade growing. And we also continue to see opportunities to invest in infrastructure in support of our trading flows and in support of the service that we provide our customers. A lot of people have talked about the end of the, uh, let's say, the commodity super cycle. In reality, what we see is that there's still a world that is growing. Uh, fairly healthily. Uh, China, despite a bit of a hiccup, uh, is still growing at a healthy rate. We see other regions that are growing quite significantly, such as Africa. And all of this effectively, we believe, continues to provide positive support for our business model. What drives our business model is not short-term market fluctuation. Uh, we're really focused on the long-term supply and demand balances and the economic factors uh, that drive them. If you look at our way of operating in our risk management model, we're pretty indifferent to price. We systematically hedge the price risk embedded within the physical commodities that we trade. Whether price goes up or down has limited impact on our profitability, on our performance. What we focus on is really about supplying our customers and meeting the demand that is growing around the world and also making sure we match supply and demand uh, when needed using not only our trading skills but also our infrastructure. In that respect, I think we have a fairly distinctive uh, business model, which is really about trading the commodities such as oil, gas, minerals, bulk commodities, which is at the core of, of our business, with the support of strong investment in infrastructure and logistical assets. I think the fact that we're a private company owned by the employees really drives a long-term focus, as well as ensures that we have a very conservative risk management culture. It's been a very busy year. The highlights are, on the one hand, that we've grown our trading volumes, in particularly in oil, where we've moved from 2.1 million barrels on average per day last year to about 2.4 this year. Towards the end of the year, it was closer to 2.5 million barrels per day. We've also done something which is expanding into uh, new regions, and in particular, Russia and CIS. And here we've opened an office, and we've effectively also planted our flag by doing a very large prepayment to Rosneft of about $1.5 billion over five years against, obviously, offtake of products and crude. We've also obviously continued our developments in the industrial businesses that we have. In particular, Puma has made a big foray into Australia with significant acquisition of independent players and has become effectively the largest uh, independent uh, distributor of fuel in Australia. We are investing in the US in Corpus Christi in an uh, oil storage and export terminal. Uh, we're investing in uh, Burnside on the Mississippi in a coal export terminal. In Colombia, specifically on a river port, barge, truck and rail system to revitalize the Magdalena River. We've also co-invested with Mubadala in a large iron ore export terminal in Brazil, which will have the capacity of 50 million tons. We've also continued to expand our funding requirements, obviously to, to help grow our volumes and the trade that it supports, as well as supporting our investments in fixed assets. And in that respect, we've you know, continued to expand in the uh, traditional areas, such as uh, bilateral lines, uh, securitization, uh, syndicated lines, US private placement, and obviously the bond market. We've also entered a, a new market, which is the petrol bond, where we've issued for the first time a $500 million petrol bond uh, in uh, Asian and Europe market, which has the benefit of giving us very long-term financing, but also of providing equity-like capital to support our balance sheet and our financial ratios. The other key highlight, and probably the last one of the year, is also the fact that we've done a capital raise at the level of Puma, and through that retained just a little bit less than 50% in Puma, which uh, you know illustrates a number of things. When once business is mature, an ability to reinvest, so we release capital, which we can then reinvest and redeploy in other activities that we have. And also, it means that it's very consistent with our long-term strategy, which is to stay private as, as a company, but to open up the capital of our industrial businesses to ensure that they can grow independently. And now Puma, through that latest capital increase, has not only additional capital, but also the ability to fund and grow itself uh, independently of traffic ever. We have five business lines, trading, uh, three industrial, Puma, Impala and mining, as well as our asset management. And really we threw opportunities across the board. And I think that the long-term drivers of the world economy, even if there is, people talk about a certain sluggish growth and reduced pace of industrialization and urbanization, it's still there. And we still see that driving effectively the growth of demand for the commodities that we trade, which really is supportive of our business. So if you look at Trafigura in that context, we still see ourselves at the forefront 
of global trade. And we are looking to use our distinctive business model of trading supported by infrastructure investment to really advance trade on a global basis.